Okay guys, welcome to the following video inside of phase five. So I'm not making these um, particularly in order, but they will be in order when you're watching them, right? So the point of this video is back testing and stress testing, right? So up to this point, right? You now know how your pair tends to move, right? You now know how to create a model and the trading plan. You now know how to read a narrative. So now you have to apply your knowledge with the intent of a positive result. Okay, All right. So before applying your plans and models, right, you must first make sure it's a profitable method through backtesting, right? So there's the biggest difference between backtesting and stress testing, right? Backtesting is essentially looking left, right, and seeing if what you're trying to trade works, right? Once you see that it works, right, you now want to stress test. You now want to actually trade it live, not necessarily live money. But in real time, why? Because with backtesting, right, the, the biggest issue with backtesting, for example, let's say you're backtesting H4, right? You're not backtesting, you're not actually playing that time factor. You're, you're, you're essentially scrolling through H4 candles, trying to make sure that, you know, the scenario works. So that patience factor, you know, that whether you're in drawdown for 15 to 20 minutes, uh, which I highly doubt you would be unless your your stop is over five pips. But anyways, you get my point, right? That time aspect isn't being tested while you're back testing. Okay. So now when you're coming with back, when you're trying to back test, right? Two ways, right? Number one, you simply look back within, I say two years of data and find setups that fit your plan, right? So you want to see how often they happen and you want also want to see the hit rate, right? Um, just because we have high RR doesn't and that the RR will outweigh the losses doesn't mean that you that you should be okay with a shitty win rate, right? Focus on your win rate while also focusing on your RR and that is exponential growth. Okay. So this is, um, you know, this method number one is more of a so called regular practice, per se, as you do with, you know, any other type of backtesting. Make sure to annotate your chart so you can refer to them back then. So that means screenshot them. Um, make sure you have them saved so you have you know something to refer back to after you know you progress. So number two, right? You can run drills on yourself by running drills on yourself. I mean hit replay mode and literally just trade. Um, not actually seeing the quote unquote, um, you know, just seeing the setups already happened and you're essentially just trying to backtrack what happened, how it happened, right? Now you just want to play replay mode and actually, you know, take that execution as if it was real time, because obviously you don't have that, that time aspect. You can just skip through, right? But <clears throat> it's until you receive consistency with these drills like this, that you will probably be able to imitate that in an actual live market. Um, because for example, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like practicing a specific drill at a practice session of a sp specific sport, right? You're practicing a certain play and you're essentially trying to now imitate that in real time based on the knowledge you already have. Okay. <clears throat> so as you do this, right, you're now forecasting potential moves and gaining experience. Experience is essentially everything here, right? Because you can, you will have the same information for months and months and months. But over time, you're going to develop more interpretation, right? Deeper understanding, right? Because of that experience factor, right? And that's also, you know, kind of that kind of adds on to why I have you guys, um, you know, wait those six weeks when you first join, right? You want to build that experience, independence, right? And patience. <clears throat> so, right, while you're back testing, right? Let's say you're not running drills, you're just simply looking back. Um, make sure that, you know, the, the sessions, not by sessions, I mean your actual backtesting session, make sure that your sessions have specific aims. For example, what am I trying to get better at today? Is it, am I trying to improve my structure? Am I trying to improve my entries? <clears throat> am I trying to improve the types of POIs that I take, right? Or am I trying to get better with reactions, right? You need a specific topic and you want to have specific sessions to fit that because you want a purpose. You can't just be sitting on a screen trying to backtest for hours and hours and hours, right? And have no purpose, right? That's inefficient, 
and you're essentially wasting your time and you're not you're pretty much not learning anything so yeah just make sure that every back testing session has a purpose and make sure that you know you're you're being efficient with your time okay so now <laughs> going to stress testing right so after you see success you know after however long it takes you to see whether it's days weeks months right you now want to tackle the market in real time this is when you're actually applying what you've learned to this point okay so this is directly tied to your journaling side of stuff where you want to journal your stuff and then obviously send them to me um if you choose to sorry about that right so this is essentially where the real test begins right this is where you begin to test everything that you've learned like we said right and make it work right make it make sense right because now this is going to be the big deciding factor on whether or not you're going to be profitable over x amount of time um so essentially what you want to do now is just actually trade make sure that you know you're mentally right right make sure that your rules have been tested make sure that you know your models have been tested right and journal your results and alter any necessary aspect to create quote unquote progress right because you can't fix something you don't know is wrong so the only way you're going to know it's wrong is by you know obviously doing it repeatedly and seeing it in your journals right so for the most part back testing is just as important as stress testing right i don't think either one outweighs the other right because one is necessary for the other um so make sure you you balance out what how much you do of each right and then essentially go from there so that wraps up this video and i'll see you guys in the next one